Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews on How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a touchscreen 7-inch monitor, which might become your next second screen. Keep watching to find out why. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at a tiny, tiny touchscreen, which you could use as an additional PC screen for your computer at home, you could, if you want to, use this for something for maybe a Fire TV stick. Ideally, these things seem to be suited towards Raspberry Pi. In the DIY market, a lot of people use those Raspberry Pis with a screen like this to have a kind of very portable PC setup, which you can then use to either control things around home, such as home servers, that kind of thing, or home automation kits, or maybe some form of emulation. But essentially, the only thing that's going to limit you is your own imagination and how many bits you're prepared to buy to make it all work. Talking of buying bits to make it all work, let's go through the packaging, see what we get actually included, go through some of the specifications of this unit, and we'll talk about some of the reasons why I think it's actually a pretty good idea and why it actually works really well for me. So when you actually get the package, and this one actually was kindly sent to us by Sky Stalker, one of our regular viewers. Thank you very much, Sky, for sending this for us to uh, check out. Do appreciate it. It's actually one of those things I've been meaning to get around to do and proper unboxing this for absolutely ages and actually finally get it mounted in its final position. But I've been trying out a few things and working out what works best, how I'm going to actually integrate it in my particular setup. My setup is relatively unique, whereas I've got an extremely small desk space. I can't have two monitors. I've got a 32 inch monitor already and I need something else so I can monitor other things when I'm doing things like video editing possibly playing games, that kind of stuff. Just a separate monitor, just so I can keep an eye on what's going on without having kind of loads of minimized windows all over the place. Anyway, I digress. Your needs may vary. This is what we get in the box. So this is from Long Runner. It's a seven inch LCD display, 1024 by 600. So resolution wise, yeah, not the highest. Although considering the size, it's only a seven inch screen. So we have got a very, very small pixel density on there. It's basically the same as a 15 inch monitor but squeezed down into a seven inch screen. So yeah, the actual display is really good and you've probably seen from some of the B-roll. The camera doesn't do it justice. It generally doesn't. Filming a monitor with another camera always gives you issues and the more effect you'll see on the screen isn't present in real life, I will assure you. And it does look absolutely sharp and pin perfect. Anyway, that's enough about the box. So let's take a look and see what we actually get inside. Now, obviously I've been through this already a few times, so this is gonna be slightly different from how you should receive yours. And actually saying that, I have looked on amazon.co.uk today. This actually retails for somewhere in around about 60 pounds at the moment. The actual one you'll get now is slightly modified, so it's a little bit nicer. There's a few tweaks. As always with these kinds of things, unless you get just a bare screen on its own, they will make slight revisions, so obviously what you're seeing today, you may not receive exactly the same model. So please don't flame me in the comments if that is the case. Do check carefully the pictures and descriptions actually on Amazon or AliExpress or wherever you buy it from. Right, with that said, so we get a driver disc. So the driver disc, I'm not entirely sure what is even on there because I don't have a optical drive to test it. I'm assuming there'll be something on there for the touchscreen drivers, which possibly are used for Windows, but essentially it works pretty much plug and play on Windows 10 and Windows 11. Also included are a pair of feet or angled feet for actually standing the monitor up. So we'll take a look how those fit on shortly. Also included in the packaging are a set of four standoffs and eight screws. I'm assuming this is to mount something like one of the smaller Raspberry Pis onto the back of the case itself. Again, the ones I've seen on Amazon recently are slightly different, so you may or may not get those included. There is a teeny tiny HDMI cable. Now Sky actually sent another one along. So depending on what you need, I would say personally, depending where you're going to mount this, you may want to get a right angled HDMI adapter because of the way it plugs into the side. Again, some people may not care how it looks, but certainly having a right angled one may be beneficial for some instances, but a regular HDMI cable is absolutely fine. Also included is a micro USB to type A connection. Now this is specifically USB 2.0 only. I have actually tried using this on USB 2 ports and USB 3 ports on the front panel of a PC and it just doesn't work properly. Your mileage may vary. I found the best options with this if you're using it in touchscreen mode is to plug the type A connector into the back of your computer into a standard USB 2.0 port. If for some reason when you're setting your device up and it doesn't register or you're just getting the screen on but you're not actually getting any touchscreen interface, then you possibly need to change your USB cable or position. Also included is a micro HDMI to full size HDMI. So again, for things like the Raspberry Pi, that's included straight away in the pack. 
Also included is a tiny little screwdriver. And finally, we get to the monitor itself. So as again, this is a seven inch monitor. On the back, there are some details about what it is. So seven inch display uh, with capacitive touch screen. Video interface is HDMI and there's capacitive touch interface is USB, as we said. Display resolution, 1024 to 600, as we said again, and power supply voltage is five volts DC. So you don't necessarily have to plug this into a PC. As long as you can get five volts to it, you'll be absolutely fine for actually powering the device itself. When it comes down to the touch screen, obviously, you are going to need either software support in your operating system of choice. So whether that is Windows, whether that's Linux, whatever, then obviously you do need that as well. But in terms of purely powering the device, five volts is absolutely fine. The screen itself, nice screen, again, seven inches, IPS technology, actually looks really good. I was surprised how nice it looks. You think of a seven inch screen, it's not going to look the best, but actually watching some videos today and looking at some of my old content actually on here looks really good. Now the display you'll see on the screen, because there's a camera, again, filming and monitor, doesn't always look as it should do, but do trust me, it looks absolutely brilliant. The brightness and all that kind of stuff, you can't adjust. So the brightness is basically what it is. I wouldn't say it's particularly dull. Obviously, there's not a full spectrum of color gamma on there. So yeah, contrast is a little bit on the weak side, but again, for a small monitor, it's gonna be absolutely fine for secondary things. I wouldn't use it for content creation, that kind of thing, but for consumption and just for maybe answering emails, checking on the Discord, that kind of thing, absolutely fine for those kinds of things. Looking on the back again, so we've got the mounting sections there, so there's four pillars there, which I'm pretty sure these other plastic pillars are designed to go with, so they screw onto there, so then you can put a, a Raspberry Pi on the back, I guess, I'm not entirely sure. Raspberry Pi is not my uh, strong point, I'll be completely honest with you there. Also, we've got these slots on each side, so this is where the actual feet go in, so they just slot in, making sure you put them in the right side. No, nope. that's the one. It was a 50-50 and I got it wrong three times. So that is the feet actually installed. So that makes it completely freestanding. So if you want to, again, you could have it on your desktop. I'm actually planning on putting this in front of my existing monitor. So I've got my existing monitor, 32 inch one, which is curved. And I'm probably gonna have this just actually just in front of the main monitor. So if I'm playing a game or doing some video editing and there's something happening on Discord or I get an email come in, I can just look down and see what's going on on my secondary screen. I think that's gonna work out very well. Again, your setup may differ entirely. You may want to forego the feet altogether and maybe mount it onto a wall area, something like that. You could do quite easily. And again, being a touch screen, you could maybe use this to control some form of digital jukebox on a PC somewhere in the house and just have the wires go into it. The uh, possibilities are pretty much endless, depending how much you want to spend and how creative you want to get. But certainly, I think it's actually a very flexible little tool. I have actually taken the back off to have a look inside. So I'll give you a close up so you can see what it actually looks like. In terms of the I.O., so we can see from here, there is a HDMI port there, which is gold plated. There's also a touch and USB connection. So that is both power and touch interface. So if you've got a micro USB cable and you can plug that into the top connection, and that will provide both your five volt power and also data to communicate obviously with the touch screen movements, etc., etc. The one beneath that is actually just a standard power connector. Again, it is micro USB style. So Again, if you don't want to use touch, then you can just use that to power. That's absolutely fine. You could use two at the same time if you want to. I don't see any reason why you couldn't, but you probably wouldn't need to. The less wires you can use, the better. And underneath that is a dip switch. So one of the downsides of this screen, I'm not sure why or why it even works out like this, but when you put the screen or your main desktop into kind of standby mode, this doesn't turn off. So it's permanently illuminated. It just comes up with a blue screen saying no signal which I'm guessing is some way to do with how the image is actually processed. Maybe there's not enough electronic trickery inside of here to go, okay, there's no signal, I'll go to sleep. It doesn't do that. So for some of you, if you do leave your monitors unattended for an extended period, it may be a pain in the backside, but it's not too bad because again, you can just go to the side and turn off the backlight. Make sure when you do set yours up for the first time that the backlight position is in the on position, Otherwise, when you plug stuff in, there's no backlight, so you can't see anything on the screen. So you don't know if it's actually working. You don't know if it's connected other than possibly Windows giving you that kind of USB plugged or unplugged detection. So yeah, do bear that in mind. That did catch me out. I was thinking, why is this thing not working? And then I realized, ah, the backlight isn't on. So yes, that uh, may catch some of you out like it did myself. So overall, a really cool little package. 
around about £60, like we said, here in the UK. I was kindly sent this by Skystalker, so uh, we didn't have to actually shell out for it. But certainly, if I did have to pay for it, it's one of those things, if you want the convenience of having a tiny screen, you do have to pay the privilege. You could quite easily, if you look into the second-hand market, you can look on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, etc., and you can pick up a second monitor, a 15-inch or that sort of size, for next to nothing. People essentially will give them away. If you're looking for something a little bit bigger than a secondary monitor, if you've got the room, then of course, 20, 40, 50 pounds, you can get a half decent monitor to have as a secondary display. But if you're in that niche market where you just really do not have the room, or you want that really condensed experience where you don't need a full size monitor, you don't have the room for it, you don't want to go through all that hassle, but you just want a simple secondary monitor to monitor what's going on in your PC while you're doing other things, then this works out really well. There are some caveats also, which we probably should talk about when it comes down to touchscreen support. Now, obviously, depending on which operating system on what platform you're using, your mileage will vary greatly. When you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11, touchscreen experience doesn't always translate particularly well. Now, if you're using this as a single standalone monitor, it works absolutely flawlessly, exactly how it's intended to. So you can use the start menu, open up applications, open up your calculator, use your calculator, all that kind of stuff, and do it all by control. You've got the five finger gesture and all that stuff. So you can do the usual thing, you can flick in from the side to open up tabs, you can flick out from that side to do other things. That all works absolutely flawlessly. The real thing is when you actually add it as a secondary monitor. So if you've got your primary monitor, such as us, we've got the one behind me, or actually on my desktop, I've got my main screen. When you would add a touch screen to that, you do have to bear in mind which monitor is your primary. So if you set this monitor as your primary monitor, touch screen then works pretty much normally. Obviously it will only work for things displayed on this screen. It will not work for things actually on the other display. Whereas conversely, if you set this to your secondary screen, although you can visually see everything on the screen, if you touch the screen, it relates to what is on your primary screen. So a practical demonstration of that is, so if for instance, I've got my secondary display on here, which is extended monitor essentially, and you can see the Windows taskbar on the bottom, you can press it and the taskbar will do absolutely nothing at all. If you press in just about the right position on the screen above you, so say for instance, you've got like a, a window open there, Google for instance, you could tap on, or YouTube I suppose is a good one, you could tap on something there and it will roughly work out where on the screen it is. So this will basically replicate a touch screen area of your main monitor, which can be rather confusing. So the touch screen experience isn't like Hollywood. So it's not like you've got all these screens and you've got a single touch screen and you can drag stuff around from all the screens and the touch works everywhere. It doesn't. And also if you've got a touch enabled screen already and you're adding this as a secondary touch enabled screen, you can't use both touch screens at the same time, which is another thing within Windows. You may be able to do it within Linux, etc., etc., or homebrew stuff that may be possible. But certainly from what I've tried from Windows, those things are not possible. So what I really like to say is the monitor itself is absolutely excellent. As a standalone device, perfect, no issues whatsoever. If you're using it as a secondary device, do not expect a totally seamless experience when it comes to the touch screen. Now, if your mileage varies and you've got on much better of yours than I have with mine, or you find ways around that to make it work, please, please do let us know in the comment section because I'm sure it'll be beneficial to me and also I can pass that information on should it uh, work as intended. But I just want to make you aware of some of the kind of the, um, the offsets. Obviously, it's a very positive thing. It's very low energy. It's very handy, etc. Even if you're running things like stock tickers, that kind of thing to keep a look on, very, very useful. But yeah, it isn't exactly that kind of space age thing which we're looking for. So anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.